Hey there guys, it's Chili here coming at you with the solution to the tutorial 6 homework. Uh, the homework had two parts, easy and hard, and the basic theme was to create a function or functions that, you know, keep your box within the allowed region of the screen. So, for the easy homework, I created a uh, simple function here, no return value, no parameters, and uh, let's take a look at its definition. Here it is. And it's just the same stuff that uh, we had done in, I forget, in one of the earlier tutorials. It's exact same code, basically, keeping it within the screen. And this works fine, but, uh, you know, as I mentioned in tutorial 6, this style of making a function where it directly accesses the, uh, the member variables of the class is, you know, it's not... It's not optimal because it's only going to work now for the uh, for the mobile box for the box that is defined by X mobile and Y mobile. It's it's directly coupled or connected to those variables. So the second question in the homework was to implement the same functionality, but do it in such a way that it's not linked to any specific member variables. So you can reuse the function for different boxes if you wanted to. Uh, and the solution to that is right here. So let's take a look at the header file. So I've created two functions for this one, and I'll talk a little bit more about why you need to do that later. But there's one for the X component and one for the Y component. And it's just called clamp screen X, clamp screen Y. And if we go now to the definition, you can see what I've done here, basically. It's the same idea, uh, right? If the left side of the box is less than zero, we, we're going to basically set the X component to five, which is the value that will make the left side of the box become zero, just at the very left hand of the screen. And it's the same idea for the right. But here, instead of setting a variable, we're going to return the value that we want X to be set to. And it's the same idea for Y. We return the value that it should be set to. So if we're off the left hand side we return 5, if we're off the right hand side we return you know height minus 6, otherwise if we're, if we're okay we just return the value that we were passed in, we don't make any change. And the way you use this code is, let's see, up here you're just going to pass x mobile to clamp x and then you're going to set the value to that value that was returned and the same thing for y. Now some of you may wonder, well why can't you just pass in both the x and the y and then change them in the function like this. So here you would pass in x mobile and y mobile and then you would change x y in here and that would change x mobile and y mobile. But that's not how functions work. And I'll get into this more in detail in a later episode. But basically, when you pass in, for example, when you call clamp to screen x with x mobile what's happening is you're loading the value of x mobile and then you're passing that value to clamp screen but clamp screen in here it doesn't have any access to x mobile right uh, this variable x the parameter is a local variable to this function and it dies at the end of this function and its value is initially set to the parameter that was passed in so, when you call clamp screen x like this, what happens is it the, uh, the computer loads the value of this variable and then it passes that value to clamp screen x and that variable gets stored into the local variable x which is then used throughout this function and is destroyed. Anything you do to X, you change its value in any way, it's not going to make a lick of difference because it's going to be destroyed at the end. It has no further connection to uh, X mobile. The only relation it has is that its initial value was the value passed in, which was loaded from X mobile. That's the only connection. So you can't change these local variables 
and expect any change to happen outside of this function. So the only way to get that data outside is to do a return value. And since you can only return a single value from a single function, that's why you need to split it up into two functions, one to uh, adjust the X and one to adjust the Y. Now, some of you who are familiar with C or C++ or similar languages will probably know that there is a way to allow the function to modify the parameters that are passed into it. Uh, and we'll get into that later, but since I haven't covered that topic yet, it wasn't kind of, it wasn't on the table for this solution. So that'll about do it for the solution to tutorial 6's homework. If you've got any uh, questions or comments or ideas, or you just want to, I don't know, meme it up, feel free to leave a comment. And uh, I will see you soon with some more C++ tutorials.